Welcome to The Wave Strength, innovative solutions for a secure retirement. Presented by Pacific Life. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Wave Strength Podcast. I'm your host, Jim Breen, head of marketing for Pacific Life's institutional team. And with us today in the studio is Kristen Brooks, a senior sales associate with Pacific Life's institutional team. Kristen, thanks so much for coming on out and, and being with us uh, for today's show. Thanks, Jim. I'm so happy to be here. Kristen was with us for episode 13. Um, and in that episode, we discussed empathy work. And, and maybe you can give a, a little recap to our, our listeners today about uh, that episode, which Today's episode is a continuation of that content, but let's set the stage a little bit. Sure, Jim. So the empathy work that we did was taking a deeper dive with our Pacific Life employees as plan participants. Um, coming on board, I am leading the DCLI initiative for our sales team and really trying to get a better understanding and background of what plan participants' needs are while they're planning for retirement leading up to that point. So we decided to utilize our PL employees as guinea pigs, so to speak, um, and really dive in deep with them to find out what their needs are, what their concerns were, what their obstacles are, so that we can kind of help fill those gaps and, and figure out a solution that will help everyone because no one size fits all and that's awesome and th there's so much to unpack with the um, content that you just laid out there so before we get to that shameless pl plug I, I want to encourage uh, our listeners head over to, to YouTube Spotify and, and Audible and go listen to episode 13 with Kristen um, that we did some time ago I think it was about four or three months ago or so it's a great episode and you really do a good job of uh, explaining the why why, why we did that um, and why, um, why it was important that we looked within our four walls at Pacific Life to uh, work with our HR team to learn more about our employees, really start at the core for us uh, uh, in, in terms of what we can do um, to, to help participants in the future um, looking at this empathy work. So I encourage everybody to head over there, look at that episode, and don't forget to like and subscribe. But let's, let's dive deeper into the, the, the thoughts that you shared a moment ago. Looking at our four walls, Kristen, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a, one of those, those moments where we get so caught up in our day-to-day -day where we're trying to bring solutions and, and a positive um, 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 outlook for participants and, and um, helping folks with education, et cetera. We sometimes forget that, well, wait a minute, we, a lot of us are in the same boat. A lot of our employees within our four walls are nearing retirement or perhaps join, just join the workforce and they don't know the first thing about retirement planning. And what a great idea to, to start in our four walls, looking within Pacific Life for those resources. Absolutely. You being a plan participant yourself, you know that our plan, we have great benefits. It's very robust. And for those that have been employed with Pacific Life for a long time, may have even forgot what's within those plan documents. Um, so it is very important for us to continue that awareness around what benefits and options as an employee we have within our plan. And so that was the overall goal. And one of the things that we pulled from those empathy interviews was that the awareness was lacking. No one knew that this benefit was out there. No one knew. But once we advertised it and made it known, someone even used the word, they love the word guaranteed because it gave them a fuzzy feeling. Just kind of those comments of guaranteed, lifetime income, things like that really help set the stage of, okay, we know we have some work to do. We know we need to educate people to, to get them to a point where they're ready to start working towards their retirement goals. So what we, what we realized from these empathy interviews is that the awareness is needed. And that is going to help people go towards their retirement goals. But first, they have to know what those retirement goals are. So I really think that with these empathy interviews, that got people thinking like, OK, I'm not going to be 65 for some time out, but I better start thinking about this now. And why not think about it while you're employed, while you have some extra income to help start saving towards your retirement in the future? So, again, going back to that awareness and it's not just an awareness of, oh, Pacific Life, what options they have available for their employees, but the awareness at an individual level of this is something they need to start thinking about now. So, Kristen, with the work that you did uh, with our team and, and HR, um, did you perhaps find a, a, a deeper understanding or a, a new sense of how important education is? You know, like with the Alliance for Lifetime Income, ALI, of which Pacific Life's a charter member, 
you know, we've seen that there's a deep need for, for participant education. And um, a lot of the examples that they show, sh a lot of the information that's provided is just difficult to understand for the average participant. In these empathy interviews and the work that you've done, you know, did it uncover a, a, a deeper understanding for you about that need for education? Absolutely. I say that because we actually work very close to it. We're th we, Pacific Life, we are within the insurance industry. So we have a little bit of a knowledge to know. Imagine the ones that don't have the background in insurance that we have. It can be very overwhelming and daunting. So the fact that w the fact that when I was speaking with the employees during the empathy interviews and these folks have that insurance background, but still there is still that longing for guidance and education, being able to make a right decision for themselves shined a light on the fact that this is something that we need to hone in on because not everyone feels comfortable working with a financial advisor. Some people want to make the decisions themselves. They just need to know what decisions they need to make and, and how to get there. And so having that type of guidance, I think, is essential. So much so that we actually have a brand new area that's that was created for participant education and financial awareness starting at a very young age um, up until our ages. Um, so absolutely, I think the empathy- I'm still young, what you, a very young age. <laughs> you are, I'm Jim. still young, you you're are. still young, we're very young. Yes. <laughs> but we're ahead of the game a little yeah, bit further should, in our yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, I guess in, in relation to what, you know, my, uh, you know. Coming out of high school. Yeah, coming out of high school, <laughs> you know, coming out of elementary school, you know. Absolutely, and I, and I say that because I'm, right now trying to teach my daughter the importance of financial responsibility and knowing how to save and how to spend money and the value of the dollar it really starts at a young age but once we start to get older we're set in our ways we've lived life we've you know accumulated all of this all of these expenses and additional um, things that we probably don't need or you know that we do need um, I think that education is going to help regroup the mind that okay it's not just living for the moment but we have to kind of think beyond that and and how we're going to get there so it really unmasked the importance of participant education education period period around fi finances you mentioned a moment ago education and you also alluded to the need for not just education but planning Right, because we can provide that education, but without proper planning over time. Because unfortunately, this isn't something that you can tackle at you know one point in your retirement pl uh, planning lifespan, where ten years before retirement, you, say, you know, I'm going to start right. retire, which a lot of people do. A lot, a lot of people do. That. But wouldn't it be best if y you you had those tools? And you had the education, you had the planning resources to start the moment you enter the workforce, even if it was just the amount of a, a daily coffee, you know, that you're, you're putting into that retirement fund or whatever the case may be, starting small, but starting early, right? And I remember you bringing up some examples from, I think, the empathy work. There was mention of, of some folks in your work where you had a, a very, very different perspectives from some 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 of the folks from within our four walls you had some folks that were nearing retirement and at an early age started an excel spreadsheet for example where they were line item i mean columns everything was broken out they knew exactly what where they were going how they were getting there and what time they would what they would arrive but then you also had folks at that same age bracket who had never really sat down to plan, you know, because we're, we're people, we're humans, life gets in the way, you know, you, you, you get that first job, you get married, the kids come, and then you're, how am I going to drive them to school or, plan, you know, paying tuition or, you know, making sure you can get, get to the soccer game on time, so many things that take that space, unfortunately, um, and it pushes, kind of kicks the can down the road a little bit. Absolutely. We had the pleasure of speaking with a lot of different individuals when we did the empathy interviews, ranging from folks that were just starting out in their career, fresh out of college, um, folks that, like you said, are kind of in that middle stage of life where they have they have their families, they're, they're purchasing homes, they're, they're living for the right now, maybe not thinking about the future. And then we also had the pleasure of speaking with recently retirees. 
And those are the ones that we gleaned from. They didn't really have the tools and resources that they needed. So they were creating their own. Um, and not a lot of people have that capacity to be able to do that. Um, so we want to be able to provide those tools and resources no matter what stage you are um, in your career because we need to start thinking about the future more and not the right now. So if the more that we can help provide that education up front right when they're starting their career or whenever they're ready to start thinking about that, I think that will set the stage for a successful future. Absolutely. And it really is... Uh, when you think about it, it makes perfect sense. You know, I, 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 I have four kids, and I heard this statement one time, and I use it often with my kids when they, they feel uh, maybe they have a, a failure. They feel like they're not doing their best at something. And I say, you know, how do you become an expert? You start as a beginner. Right. right? You, you can't just start as an expert. You have to learn. You have to take those baby steps in anything. And be prepared for a little bit of failure or, or humility along the way. But you will get better if you try and if you continue down that path. Um, and look, I mean, financial uh, acumen, I mean, to, to try and understand all of the financial terms. It's a bit much. And every, it's, it's daunting mm -hmm. for, for many people. And, and I, I get it. I understand that. And, and that's why the work that you're doing is so important. And, and I really feel, especially from a marketing standpoint, that it has provided us with uh, a deep understanding, uh, a great knowledge for next steps, uh, and, and a, a real good understanding of where these people are in their process. Absolutely. I'm glad you said next steps because we, did, we didn't just want to talk to people just to talk. <laughs> it was great meeting, you know, fellow uh, Pacific Life employees, sure. but we want next steps. What, what, what's going to come from this? What's going to manifest from this? And one of the things that I had mentioned earlier was bringing that awareness. A lot of the folks that we talked to, didn't know that these benefits were out there um, relating to their retirement plan um, within Pacific Life. So one of the steps that we took immediately, we found an opportunity to partner with our HR team um, and utilize our PL Products website to get our lifetime income 401k um, solution out there so it can be known. And when I tell you when it launched, it exploded. We, re we were um, inundated with inquiries from Pacific Life employees um, asking questions, wanting quotes. A lot of the folks that we were getting those responses from weren't ready to retire. And that let us know that there is an opportunity to start having these conversations sooner because no one knew that it was out there. And the excitement of it, the fact that you can continue to have a paycheck after you've retired and it's going to yeah. last for the rest of your life. I mean, that's an awesome thing to think about. And the fact that your employee employer is going to provide that to you is even better. You know, so we, we knew it. We knew immediately after that page went out that there's some work to be done. We would like to continue to add to it. Um, and, providing educational resources and tools for our, our own Pacific Life employees. And essentially what that's going to help is take that out to our external clients to say, hey, look, we've done this empathy interviews. We heard that the awareness and the education is needed. These are the steps that we've taken to do it, and we're going to continue to build on that. Now, Kristen, um, for, for our listeners, I'll, I'll back up just a little bit because I sure. think the page we the, the page was launched since we've done the last podcast, I think, or when the last podcast, I think you were uh, right uh, about to launch the uh, the web page. Yes. So perhaps you can shine a little bit of light for our listeners on um, how you went about that process. And I know there were many people involved, but I'm I'm thinking about our HR folks listening right now, the, the folks who are, wow, this is interesting. We I would love to bring this education or th these offerings to, to – uh, my, my 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 fellow employees how, how how did that communication happen how did that connection happen to where you know you did the empathy work and then you realized okay we need to ingrain this into a web platform uh, of sorts to make it easily accessible for these uh, these participants great question so the PL products um, webpage was already in existence and it 
had solutions out there from across the organization that that's available for all employees. But what was lacking was the 401k lifetime income solution. And so after the empathy interviews, we realized that this is a great opportunity to take that first step in creating that awareness. So we reached out to our HR contacts. We um, had a small brainstorming session of many great minds coming together to pull the content together that made it simple to understand, easy to understand, um, qu immediate questions answered as soon as possible, and contact information where you can get more information and di take a deeper dive. So it was a great team to work with, um, and we, again, partnered with our HR team and we're really making sure that we honed in on what's important for the em our employees to know, and then the page was launched. Um, and so once that announcement went out is when we realized that having that awareness out there again um, is needed because it was immediate responses um, to how the page was put up and the interest in, that it garnered from it. Um, I want to call out both your work and the work with uh, our HR team. What We have a great HR team. We do. And they, they sitting in uh, some of those meetings with you, I mean, they, they were just so um, interested to learn more, right? And because it was kind of a, a a different request, I think, when when everything started. Hey, we want to reach out to employees to ask them personal questions, but and you know when you talk to HR, you know, oh, wait a minute, hold on, we got. Right. But once they realized they they were so interested and they really wanted to do this deep dive with you and the team, and it's uh, a lot of work went into this, uh, all, all the way through our internal comms team to HR to our institutional division working with um, uh, each of those very various groups, but a lot of work from a lot of different people. Absolutely, it's a partnership. Good it's, partnership, it's exactly. It's a great partnership. Um, our HR team has done their own empathy interviews with, with a different direction, um, but I think this kind of took a unique direction, and they, they realized that there is help needed um, once an employee reaches that retirement age. We actually had an opportunity to to meet with our HR um, partners a couple of weeks ago, and we got some great information that we're going to be sub summarizing over the next several weeks and essentially taking that out to the market because whatever pain points and obstacles that they're trying to help solve for employees, another plan sponsor is, our external clients are. So if we can come at that angle and come with something that they can relate to, I think it's going to be great. And it's a win-win. We get to work with our HR team. We get to work with creating this awareness around this great benefit that's going to help people pass their employ employment. Um, and also we get to take that out in the field and use that as an example. Why is why is this important? Why is it important to, to um, have access to HR and communicate with them and, and look internally? Um, I think this is an exciting opportunity to take our listeners on the journey with us to figuring out solutions that will help long term our employees. We started with the empathy interviews, talking with our plan participants within, you know, within our own four walls, partnering with HR to do that. Now we're talking with HR, we're partnering with them and taking a different angle and looking at the world of a plan sponsor. And it's exciting to take our listeners on this journey. Working with HR, like, um, you know, what were your initial thoughts when we started working with HR? Were you like nervous? Were you like worried that, you know, they're not, they're going to shoot me down or they're not going to want, want to work with us or they're going to be a little restrictive of what we can do in terms of connecting with the employees? I actually, surprisingly, I was not nervous with working with HR because we actually partner with them quite a bit within our own um, solutions team um, with employees reaching out to them directly to learn more about our retirement in, um, incentive savings plan. Um, and so I actually have built a really good rapport with the HR team and the benefits team because we help with those live inquiries that have been trickling in from here and there, um, and they tr and they turn them over to us. So when I reached out to, to them to say, hey, we actually want to do this, they were very inviting to it. And I think building that rapport and just helping out with the background that we've already had with them kind of help set the stage for those conversations and continuing them because I have a great relationship um, with the two ladies that I'm working with with HR now. What was maybe, what was the most um, impressive thing that you saw or, or witnessed um, working with the employees and the intern doing those interviews internally? What was, what was the most surprising thing for you? 
that no one knew it was out there. <laughs> no one knew that this benefit um, in, the, in this great option um, was available. That was the most surprising thing. We've had this available for 30 plus years and we knew that there were only a handful of people who have taken this option up at retirement. And so that was the most surprising thing to me because with this particular benefit, there's no commissions, there's no fees. You can use all or just a portion of your 401k. It's just that flexibility to be able to pick and choose what you want. Um, and so just the fact that no one knew about it was the was very surprising to me. It, there is one thing not knowing about it, but it's another thing knowing about it and still deciding not to want to go that direction, right? So I think we'll have a, a bigger up, up, uptake once we start having that awareness out and building more solutions um, for them to choose from. Excellent, excellent. This, this has been a great update, Kristen. Um, is there anything you'd like to share uh, at all about maybe uh, future plans or um, anything, you know, what's next, what's new? So we would like to, we would love to continue these conversations with our HR team, continue to build a focus around creating an awareness from the beginning of employment to the very end and beyond. And we, again, we would like to take that out and to utilize us as an example because we haven't figured it out yet either. Uh, but we are taking a lot of individuals within the organization to kind of help us get there. And that's going to help create that awareness externally when we start going out to the market and talking to people. So more to come on these conversations. We look forward to um, continuing those conversations with HR. And thank you for allowing me to come in and give this update. Well, Kristen, thank you. We would love to have you back, uh, especially in the next couple months to hear about the progress uh, that I'm sure you're going to, the great progress you're going to make here in the future with those future conversations with HR. Absolutely. I'd love to come back and share. Thanks, Kristen. And to our listeners, thanks so much for spending your day with us today on the Wave Strength Podcast. I want to encourage you to head over to YouTube, Spotify, and Audible. Like and subscribe our content so you can stay current with the most recent episodes. Thanks again and have a great day, everybody. This has been another episode of the Wave Strength presented by Pacific Life. Don't forget to catch us on YouTube and make sure to subscribe. Although this podcast is presented by Pacific Life, the opinions and views expressed are those of the hosts and participants and do not necessarily reflect Pacific Life's views on any of the topics discussed. Pacific Life is a product provider. It is not a fiduciary and therefore does not give advice or make recommendations regarding insurance or investment products. Pacific Life, its affiliates, its distributors, and respective representatives do not provide any employer-sponsored qualified plan administrative services or impartial advice about investments and do not act in a fiduciary capacity for any plan. Pacific Life refers to Pacific Life Insurance Company, Newport Beach, California, and its affiliates, including Pacific Life and Annuity Company. Insurance products are issued by Pacific Life Insurance Company in all states except New York and in New York by Pacific Life and Annuity Company product availability and features may vary by state. Each insurance company is solely responsible for the financial obligations accruing under the products it issues. This podcast was recorded on August 4th, 2022. Thanks for joining us on today's show. We'd love to hear from you. Join the conversation below and leave a comment on your thoughts on what the industry can do better for participants as it pertains to lifetime income solutions. And if you'd like more interesting content, Click one of these links over here.